I did not read all these books in September. Hello friends, I'm Marilyn Maya and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm going to go into it right away and say that September was not a good reading month for me. I failed at most of the readathons that I attempted. I did finish a few books, very few. Um, Kelly was saying from books I'm not reading that uh, there's been a lot going on on book two with people going through stuff and I'm one of those people uh, that went through some health issues this month. Uh, first it was my neck was stiff and uh, I was like dizzy and uh, then I went to a doctor and I won't even go into that but um, everything is settling down except my reading. Victobert really threw me for a loop because um, I've been trying to get through some books that are very large and I'm enjoying them but um, it's kind of messed up my uh, September, October a little bit, but who cares as long as you like the books you read. Um, let me talk about the books I didn't get to and the readathons that I didn't get to. I really failed at Dick Timber. And um, I want to talk about, because I really want to read these books. And one of them is a, um, Raymond Chandler, uh, The Lady in the Lake. Um, it's a Philip Marlowe book, and I bought this in, at Shakespeare and Company in, in Paris um, because I love Raymond Chandler. I love his books, and I haven't read it, um, so I failed at Philip Marlowe, the, dic the detective, the dick, <laughs> as they used to call them. I also failed at Bruno, Chief of Police. Uh, by um, Martin Walker. The problem with this book is it's a library book and I, even though I renewed it, it was, it was this is the first of the series. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can say it's series September in a way, but because it was the first book, I think they were telling a lot about the town and the story didn't start fast enough for me and I have to return it to the library. But um, it really, I've got, one of my good friends loves this series and recommended it to me uh, and said that I should really um, stay with the series because it gets really good when he starts cooking. So uh, Benoit Corriguez, AKA Bruno, he's a policeman in a small village in the south of France. He's a former soldier who has embraced the pleasures and slow rhythms of country life. And um, he has a gun but never wears it. It's, it's really a cute book and um, I think I'm gonna enjoy Bruno. But what happens is that uh, he talks a lot about the town and uh, the politics between um, him and you know the, the major, you know, place that who pays him, the mayor and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it didn't get into the mystery fast enough. So instead of renewing it, I'm going to just wait a little while and uh, take it out of the library again with a fresh outlook. And um, the last one was a book that was given to me by um, a booktuber. And uh, it's uh, Agatha Christie. And I one of the few books that I collect are Agatha Christie's, one of my favorite um, authors of all time. And th uh, this is a rare one that I haven't read. It's Cat Among the Pigeons. And uh, this story is a delightful mix mixture of Prince Ali's jewels struggled from Rabat to England and the goings on at an exclusive girls school. So that does sound exciting, but I didn't get to it. Another book that I really want to get to because it's a library book is Small Pleasures. Uh, this has been touted on Booktube as uh, in the last year as a wonderful book. I think it won some prizes too by Claire Chambers. And um, so it's about, 
It's a it's a, a, a 1957, and Jean Swinney is a features edi editor at a local paper in the southeast suburbs of London. Clever, but with limited career opportunities on the brink of 40. Oh, the, if I wish I was on the brink of 40. <laughs> but she lives a dreary existence that include caring for her demanding widowed mother. It's a small life with little joys and no likelihood of escape. And then it goes into, uh, it all changes when um, Gretchen Tilbury contacts the paper to claim that her daughter is the result of a virgin birth. And she gets involved with the family and uh, I guess life changes in a, not a bad way for her. So um, yeah, it has a lot of good things said about it. And uh, although, you know, the virgin birth, maybe that's why I didn't pick it up, you know, but yeah, a woman in the, uh, in the 1950s is something I really want to read, but I haven't gotten to you, to it yet. Then I failed at, I can't say I failed at this. Um, I failed at this book. It's Tudor Timber. And this is The May Bride uh, by Susanna Dunn. And it just didn't grab me. I had to DNF it. It's about Jane Seymour, uh, one of the wives of Henry VIII, supposedly the wife that he loved the most, you know, but you know, with Henry VIII, you never know. So Jane Seymour finds herself in the midst of scandal and intrigue at Wolf Hall in Susanna Dove's masterful novel of the Tudor era. If you've read this, you know, let me know if I should give it another try. I DNF'd it really, you know, really fast because I really wanted something more historical rather than fictional about this period. And there is another author that's, you know, sub, you know, wrote about the six wives of Henry VIII that uh, might be more historical rather than fictional that I might want to read first. So if you've read this book, let me know, you know, did I really fail? Now I said I didn't fail completely because while in September, uh, Lil at Lil's Vintage World said you can do anything in, um, tutorish in September. And I came across a poem I read, uh, I read, I wrote when I was, um, I had to be like 20 and uh, in the seventies, there was a series on TV that I don't know if anyone here remembers, but it was The Six Wives of Henry VIII. And uh, Keith Mitchell, a renowned uh, British actor, played Henry VIII. And at least in the beginning, I was very attracted to him, the actor, uh, and even Henry VIII. And it, uh, it made me, uh, not made me, but it, it it inspired me to write a bad poem about about Henry VIII. So I might um, <laughs> I might do a short where I read this poem. Uh, I wouldn't do it to you now. Um, yeah, but uh, I am interested in the Tudor period very much, and I'm sorry that I didn't get to more Tudor books. Okay, so. Um, what else did I read? Okay, what well, I did read. What did I read, actually? I had a very lovely experience with Nikki at Red Dot Reads, and we read Josephine Tay, uh, a wonderful mystery thriller author around Agatha Christie's time, Golden Age. And this one is called Brat Farrar. And without going into a lot of it, because I talked about it already, um, it's more of a suspense, I would say, than a mystery. But um, so we're in Ashby Hall, and the Ashby family, uh, somebody comes in named Brad Farrar, and he, um, he's posing as one of the dead sons who supposedly committed suicide. So he's the heir to the fortune and the older brother is kind of like kicked out, so he's not very happy. Um, this book is lovely in that it talks a lot about horses. And uh, what Nikki said is that she saw uh, an adaptation of this, you know, on British TV that 
was all about horses and um, that part is very exciting and uh, it's also exciting because we see the family dynamics and uh, how Brat Farrar is going to fit in or not and uh, what is, is a mystery in it and um, maybe the mystery wasn't in the end as wonderful so I gave it four stars but um, Josephine Tay is a delightful uh, just her prose is just on point it's just that she didn't believe in uh, the rules that the mystery writers of the golden age I was reading about this they didn't uh, she didn't conform in a lot of ways she didn't conform she was very introverted and didn't want to you know have any interviews etc but anyway I really recommend this book um, for all my friends out there who are mystery lovers okay then I read another Anita Bruckner fraud um, this is one of her later books and uh, you know it's not a happy book as Anita Bruckner's books aren't happy but I'm different in that I like her later her latter books because um, yeah she talks about older people which you know I found out I kept on saying I'm in my seventh decade and one of my good friends on booktube pointed out no Maya you're in your eighth decade oh that <laughs> I said I will I'm so glad I wasn't good at math <laughs> but yeah it is what it is so uh what is fraud about well, you know, not going into it very deeply, we, it's a wonderful photo on this uh, book of a very older woman, woman. And she's a very uh, conformist, typical English woman of the maybe 70s. And so there's two women that we're going to follow here. Um, one is Anna Durant, who took care of her mother for many years and was not married and um, she hardly you know people didn't like her very much so um, it talks about uh, her romantic interests and how they they didn't work out and also we're, t we're really into the life of the older woman and I have to say she was the more interesting character of the two women to me um, I'm trying to think of what her name is okay Mrs. Marsh an elderly woman who observed Anna's intense relationship with her mother and Lawrence Halliday who was the reticent doctor so uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in here it's 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 kind of delightful in the way it talks about how older women uh, who don't want to ask for help um, either get it or don't get help and they don't want to bother their children and I really uh, you know could emphasize with empathize with that feeling because as you get older you don't want to bother your children I hope I don't look as uh, unhappy as she is because I'm really a happy elderly person oh I hate that word elderly person but anyway I, I gave this four stars yeah um, I thought her ending here wasn't as tragic or depressing as her other endings in a lot of her other books. But I did DNF an, uh, a, another book of hers. And um, yeah, I won't even mention that right now. Um, then for Banned Books Week, I read All Boys Are in Blue. And, and I th it has banned. I got this out of my library and it it says banned and it's by George M Johnson and it's a memoir but I I, I thought it was very um, educational or you can say uh, instructive and that kind of took me out of the story a little bit but then I read um, you know what it was what it was he had men, meant it to be and he spilled it or he said it was a memoir manifesto 
So Johnson's debut is a collection of heartfelt personal essays revolving around themes of identity and family. So he grew up poor uh, and black. I don't know if he was that poor, actually. It says black and queer in New Jersey and Virginia. And he feels a tension between these identities, even before he's fully conceptualized what makes him stand out from others in his close-knit family. And I think he was brought up middle class, actually. Uh, but um, there's a lot, you know, like I said, this book is not for me. It's been banned more than any other book because of the depiction of, of sex. And uh, I think that's silly because there's so much worse things that we can, you know, bring to our children than telling them about what the world is like and how we should treat people better maybe. So um, if I had a young child ra right now, I would not, I would allow them to read this book. However, it's not a book for me personally. I learn from it, but as a memoir, I can't say it's a five star read. I would say it's a three and a half star read for me. But it's, you know, the flack that this author has gotten because of writing this book is, is really uncalled for. I don't believe in banning books at all. Um, so, yeah. Tell me if you've read All Boys Are in Blue and what you think of the controversy or not around this. Okay, so then for Shorty September, I was a little bit better uh, at it and I read two great I don't know if you would call them middle grade books, but now. Um, one was The House on Mango Street uh, by uh, Esperanza, well, it's the story of Esperanza Cordero. And uh, of course, it's by Sandra Cisneros, who went on to write uh, many other books that I haven't read, but I want to. And this book is about a young girl, uh, Esperanza, who grows up in a bad neighborhood, as we called it, in Chicago. And uh, she doesn't feel at home in this, uh, in this, on Mango Street. Doesn't want to belong to Mango Street. But it's not only about her. It's a, uh, it's a series of vignettes about people that she knew in the building, around the street, and what, what they were going through. And uh, she's a wonderful, poetry prose writer. So I want to read this again. I want to read more by Sandra Cisneros. Tell me if you've read The House on Mango Street because um, I think I want to read it again. It's short and it's so poetic that I think I want to read it again. Another book that I was talking about saving from my library because we don't have any thrift stores, bookstores in our town. So our library serves as sort of a thrift store. They sell books for 25 cents and then there's a free library. Um, and this was uh, the free library and it's Lois Ann Yamanaka's Name Me Nobody. So 13-year-old Emmy Lou feels like a nobody. She's overweight, her mom lives in faraway California and rarely visits her calls, and she doesn't know who her father is. The only people who make her feel like somebody are her brave, blunt grandma and her best friend, Vaughn. Where Vaughn go, Emmy Lou go, their families say. But now Emmy Lou fears that Vaughn is going somewhere she can't follow. I wanna say first that this is written in pidgin English, and it's written it's set in the Big Island of Hawaii. And I really, really enjoyed um, the, I live in a place, Makaha, Hawaii, where there's a large local population and people speak what they call deep pigeon. And I don't think, you know, I, I think she was trying to write um, both for the local people, you know, to speak enough pidgin, but also to explain it a little bit to people who don't understand pidgin. And if you don't understand pidgin, go out and get the book Pigeon to the Max, because it's funny. I'm sorry I don't have the, the author. I'll have that information down below. But um, 
Pidgin is a is a wonderful language. It's a real language, and it was um, developed when all of the 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 people from different places came to Hawaii to work on the sugarcane fields. They had to live together. So um, it's a it's a variety, a cornucopia of different languages, and uh, it has a rhythm, and it's a real language, and. I just learned it because I live here 45 years, but um, it's, a, it's not a hard language to understand, though I know a lot of people come up to me and say, what are they saying, you know, and I would, I would say, you know, it's, it's easy, you know, but it, I guess it isn't if you don't know any language as I'm trying to learn French, but yeah, I, this is such a wonderful uh, Vi vision of uh, the Big Island in maybe the 70s, though it doesn't really say. And I want to read more of Lois Ann Yamanaka's books. She has one about uh, the, I don't know if it's called Midnight at the Pahala Theater or something like that. I'll have that information down below that I'm going to, uh, that's a real theater that was in the Big Island. So. I'm very anxious to read more of Lois Ann Yamanaka, and I'm glad that I, I read something for Shorty September. Um, now I have a book haul. One I did take a peek at, and one I didn't. Um, so, the two books that I took a peek at is an Anita Bruckner book, and uh, it's a start in life. Um, and it says an excellent novel by any standards, richly characterized, subtle, humorous, brilliantly drawn. And this is one of her earlier books. And uh, I heard uh, from Sarah at uh, Hardcover Hearts that uh, her earlier books had more, um, you know, maybe hope in it and more story. So let me read why I bought this book. And it has a delightful, it's a Booker Prize winning author, uh, but she didn't win it for this. She, she won it for Hotel du Lac, which I loved, by the way. So uh, it says, since childhood, Ruth Weiss has been escaping from life into books. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> from the hothouse attentions of her larger-than-life parents into the gentler warmth of lovers and friends. And doc, now Dr. Weiss, at 40, knows that her life has been ruined by literature and that once again she, she must make a start in life. So of course, um, you know, there's the ruined part, but I was told, or I heard, or I read that this is more of an autobiographical book of hers because she did take care of her parents. I'm talking about Anita Bruckner. So I am looking forward to reading this book. And uh, the other book I'm going to read uh, as a buddy read, and that's A Room with a View by E.M. Forrester. And uh, I'm going to read this in November. So uh, I read and I keep on talking about Howard's End, how much I loved it. And this will be my second book. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people know this book already, but a charming young English woman, Lucy Honeychurch, faints into the arms of a fellow Britisher where she witnesses a murder in a Florentine piazza. So I'm looking forward. It's, I'm sure it's about class and uh, how people from different classes have a hard time uh, you know, getting together. And so it says she's at once at war with the snobbery of her class and her own conflicting desires. So then she goes back to England and she's courted by more acceptable people. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading this in November. And it's nonfiction November! But I'll talk about that in a second. And then a book that I don't know what it is, it just came. And Ugh. Okay. Oh my goodness. Okay. This is Careless by Chris, Kirsty Capes. And it was long listed for the Woman's uh, Prize for Fiction. And sometimes it's easy to fall between the cracks. Now let me tell you, I couldn't find this in my own country, practically, for any uh, 
reasonable price. So uh, I had to go to England to get this book and wait for it. But the only books that I really wanted to read from the woman's uh, the fiction, uh, Prize for Fiction, was uh, The Sentence, which I read and, and liked very, very much. And this book about uh, what they call the care or foster system in, um, in the UK. And it's about a young girl. So at three or four on a hot, sticky day in June, Bess finds out she's pregnant. She can tell her social worker, Henry, but he's useless. She can tell her foster mom, Lisa, but she won't understand. She really ought to tell boy, but she hasn't spoken to him in weeks. So, um, yeah, I wanted to read this book. I waited for it a long time, um, maybe next month or maybe in December. Okay, so that's my mini haul. Okay, now let's get to what I'm reading or what I, um, what I will read. So um, I am reading Lady Audley's Secret for Victober as, as part of many of the books that I'm trying to read. And uh, I'm reading it as a group read with a bunch of lovely ladies. And they all finished it, but, um, and I'll tell you why I haven't finished it, because I've been stuck on another book. I also read a book for Victober um, of Sherlock Holmes that I already read, my first Sherlock Holmes book that I read in high school, and uh, it was called The Adventures of the Speckled Band. And it led me on a lifelong love of mysteries. So, and I enjoyed it this time as well. And I'm going to dip in and out of this uh, book. The book that I'm reading on my Kindle is a book that was, uh, I didn't realize, it doesn't tell me on my Kindle um, how, you know, how much percent that it has. It's called, um, it's called The Half Sisters and Katie at Books and Things recommended it. It's by um, Geraldine Jewsbury. And okay, let me just tell you something about this book. If you don't, it's a, it's a book about feminism, but in the Victorian age. So if you don't like uh, two characters speaking to each other, one for feminism, one against feminism in long speeches, maybe you won't like this book. But it is a good story as well of two half-sisters that, that meet when they're adults. And um, yeah, and what else have I been doing? in September and October, I've been reading a lot of health magazines. And uh, maybe I should start talking about them for nonfiction November. Um, there's a book that I started in uh, September and I'm not finished it yet. And I'm gonna bring all my books so you can see the books that I haven't read and the books that I read in a pile, like some people do. Maybe I shouldn't put the DNFs in. <laughs> but, yeah, I won't put the books I haven't read in. Yeah, that wouldn't be in. I did want to say one other thing. One or two other things. I read a book w with Lindy. I finished it. She hasn't finished it yet, so I won't talk about it. But it has to be one of the fa my favorite books that I've ever read. Definitely my favorite book that I've read since joining BookTube, and I'll talk about it next time. I started it in September, and um, we're just finishing the last pages. And it's Alberta and Freedom by Cora Sandel. And I don't think I've ever read a book that, uh, beside maybe some Holocaust uh, memoirs that have touched me as deeply as this book. And uh, last year I read Alberta and Jacob, which I loved, but this book is, uh, it's wonderful, and the experience that I'm having with Lindy is wonderful, and um, I will talk about this another time. And uh, so, that's what I've been reading. Now, what's been happening? Okay, so I've been uh, mostly talking this last couple of months about the essential uh, 
books that I've been reading according to Reedsy of classic books. And I'm going to be going into the modern books that they suggest and see if I've read them and if you've read them. So that's going to be coming up on my channel. Anyway, have I talked enough? I think I have. So um, thank you so much for listening to this, if you have, to the end. And uh, thank you so much for my new subscribers and for people who came back just to, uh, to hear this old dame speak. <laughs> I love you all. I really do. And please subscribe and comment and push the notification bell. And I'll see you in a next video very soon. Aloha.